Hello. All right, this is State of Mind, uh, Sunday, and uh, we're pretty much close to reaching the goal. Probably by the time you see this, we have reached it. And I, I just want to say thank you. Appreciate it. You guys have been phenomenal. Today we've got something a little different. It's a little f- animal affair, <laughs> dog affair. <laughs> As you could probably see, we have Mork and friend, what is the name? Paloma Pixie Dust. Paloma Pixie Dust. Mork is more famous than I am. I kind of didn't want to interview Mork because he was more famous than I am. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, but we have Nikki, Car- Nikki Carvey, who is the founder of uh, Road Dog Rescue, an incredible rescue. Um, actually, I was reading an article she wrote, and I was, I was moved. Just because I think she, we we kind of are we kind of are the same in in why we're doing what we're doing. And, uh, God, I'm already moved. I'm just starting the, the introduction here. Anyway, uh, hi, Nikki Carvey. How are you? Hey. I'm just curious, though. Like, why, what, why are you getting, all, why, be- what's be- getting emotional already? Because when I read it. You sure you, it was me that wrote it? <laughs> yeah, it was you. It was, well, you were in an interview, and they put the interview in the thing. So it was, they ask you a question, then you answer. But it was just like, why you're doing what you're doing, you know? Because I consider, I consider people like you, angels. I really do, and because you, anytime you, you, you would do anything to help an animal, or I want to help people with mental illness. Um, it's a beautiful thing, so I appreciate it, and here we are, and. Now I'm going to ask you about your, you when you grew up. When did this start, this animal love, this thing? Uh, well, I remember pushing my guinea pigs along the street in a pram when I was probably about eight. And, um, and then I was very, I had kidney issues from when I was eight to when oh, I was really? 12. Yeah, I had, um, so I was in and out of hospital. And I think that's partly what triggered the depression, to be honest, because I was isolated in terms of, like when how where you look a certain way when you're on steroids you know you get like the moon phase oh yeah so these changes happen to your body that you're not in control of and i was uh so i think i became hyper aware of how i looked and and just um had to be kept home and and so my love of animals really came from that like i got my first dog when i was sick because you know i could wind my parents around my little finger at that point right so i got my first dog and then i grew went from dogs to horses and back to dogs so it's always been something but what did you get from the dogs at that time that yeah uh, you maybe you weren't getting I, from i think it's just that companionship right yeah, that yeah, people yeah. look for i think and they don't judge no they don't they they just with you and they just give you that little look when you come home. They don't care what what you physically look like. Right, or right. They don't care, and they just seem to connect with you much more on an emotional level. I think that they know what's going on and a deep. Like you think that people in rescue are angels. No, dogs. I think are angels. Ah. Like I think that they're here. Animals are here to walk the path with us, and so that's why I think people that love animals. Like I get so upset, not just about even domestic animals, but about our respect for all animals and wildlife and the ecosystem. And yeah, yeah. They all have a part to play. Like we don't know what we don't know what the bigger picture is, and and how we're all part of this oneness, if you want to say. Yeah. And so to me, it's like for us to come along and go, well, animals are just dogs are just property. It's like no, they're these beings no, that can no. give us so much. And yeah. And help you so much. Yes. If you let them. You so, know? you said you were depressed. As a as a young girl, you were depressed, or I was. I I was. Uh, I was in my own little world. I think when I was a kid, because of the illness, and then when I came out of the illness, 
I think I remember being ha- starting depression from when I was in my teens. Yeah. That kind of alienation that you start yeah. to get, and then the mood shifts, and and so it's so for me, I've had it as long as almost I can remember. Damn. So it doesn't. So when people say you you are not your depression, I completely understand that. But when you've had it for a long time, it's very hard to differentiate yourself from the I am, I am yeah, depression, yeah. I am depressed, to like, well, no, actually, it's part of me, but it's not all of me. But I think that that also is what, because I found that a lot of people in the rescue world and the animal world are dealing with some kind of mental illness. Really? Yeah, because I think it gives you more compassion and more empathy. You're right about you that. Know. And, you know, I, I, I can relate to what you're saying because for me, I was just talking about this on one of my state of minds. I, I've only really felt at peace and joy in the last couple of years. I'm 50, I'm 60 years old. I will be 60. And it's taken that long to get it. So I always felt this. I mean, I've been through a lot, you know, nervous breakdowns and anxiety, depression, but I, I always felt this stuff inside of me, but I just, it was normal. That's all, what I, that's the way I was every day. Right. But until it's gone, right. then you go, oh my goodness, right? Yeah, yeah no, because I remember one time when I was on antidepressants, um, I remember one time, one morning I woke up and I had a sense of joy. <laughs> and yes. I was just like, Oh wow! This is what people can feel. Normal like. people, yeah. When you're no- it lasted a couple of days and then it went. But it was, but it was like wow. And so I think part of the issue of sometimes the struggle of dealing with depression or, or letting it consume you is is the frustration of knowing that there is something different, but you can't seem to get there. But wait a minute, Nick. You you have to get you have to get there. Why can't, are you doing it? So you still feeling? Well, I mean, I still struggle with it. I've gone down a different route now. Um, like I um, was on and off de- antidepressants for many years. Yeah. Um, and then I got to a point of like, it gets me out of the hole. Yes. Like when you get into those I black holes. Got me holes, out of the hole, gets yeah. Me out of the holes. But it wasn't, there wasn't, still wasn't much of the joy there. That There was still that kind of okay. deadness. Okay, I'm okay. alive, I'm existing. Okay. And there was that whole kind of like, there's got to be more than this. There's got to be more than this. And so for me, I started to look into other areas of like, um, I went down the plant medicine route. Really? Yeah. And that has opened up a whole. Oh, I've never new talked about this. Area for, for, for me per, for personally. Really? is something that I was just like, because I always felt that for my depression, it's almost like it was more of a, I understand that that it's a, it can be a, a medical thing and a chemical thing and stuff, but it almost felt like it was more of a spiritual thing that, that needed oh, some kind of This is an amazing like conversation. Yes, keep connection, going. Connection. Yes. You know, that, that there was something missing of like, I can't see, I know I'm part of the world and I know I'm part of the oneness and this is all stuff that I believe in, like I believe in it, but why can't I feel it? Like, why can't I connect right. to source? Like, I can't connect to source. And, uh, oh God, I just started to feel emotional then. Uh, <laughs> That's all right. It's because all right. I... I I did the plant. I did. I actually did ayahuasca. Oh wait, no. Yeah, I did ayahuasca, but I had no experience. Like it, nothing happened. <laughs> nothing. Like I did. I went to this special retreat and I did this ayahuasca, and it was three sessions that you did with ayahuasca, and every session was just like n- no visual. But why do you think you did it? Didn't but didn't? until the last one, the, the, the third time I, because it was ego. Like I think your ego, this is the fascinating thing about how you can feel like you want to heal, but your ego can be like, no, this is what I know. This is what is comfortable for me. I okay. don't want to go down that road. Because literally the first time, the first one I did, was I could feel something happening. It wasn't visual, but I could feel something happening. And then this little voice went, don't let it in, it might be oh. e- Don't let it in, it might be evil. And then it just went, and it shut it down. It shut it down, and it just went off, and nothing happened. Then the second one, 
the, the second evening that you did it and you're in this amazing group with these amazing people. Again, it sort of started to happen. What does it taste like? It tastes sort of like mud or some kind of muddy, just a little tiny bit of muddy mixed with a bit of that kind of herby kind of stuff. Um, and then, then the second time was because the, the shamans are all doing their singing and stuff throughout it. And it felt like nails on on a scratch board where it was Whoa. just like, I was just like, I don't want to listen to this. I don't want to listen to this. And it was, it was miserable. But the saving grace for me was there was a guy there as part of the retreat who played the harp and he played these instruments that he'd made. Yeah. And it was just like, oh my God, this guy has been sent from the heavens to just, to just calm my soul because I can't handle this other stuff. And it was just the most beautiful thing that I'd ever heard, like just beautiful. Anyway, so that was then. And then, and then I had experience because they also do um, the 5-MAO DMT, which I tried, which is from the toad. And um, I tried that and the first time was kind of like I was fighting it and it was like, I can't, I can't let go, I can't let go. Because basically, to me, healing in anything, whether it's depression or everything, it's really about us letting go of our own narrative yeah. of like, I am depressed, I yeah. am this, I am that. So it's letting go of the identity that you right. had right. and moving on to something different. And I think a lot of us that feel stuck is because we can't let go of whatever it is that we're holding on to, you know? And right. so anyway, so I tried this thing and I, could, and I was like, I can't let go, I can't let go. Anyway, so that was that. And then I was really at a point and we would share every morning and I was just getting worse and worse. And my, I was in these black holes just going, I've, nothing's happening. I feel really negative. I can't understand. I'm so frustrated. And this was, you know, and everyone else was like sharing that. Oh, yeah, I saw God and I saw the. <laughs> and I had this divine connection and I'm sitting there going, oh, my God, it's I'm just best. like having a really. Lure. And then I was like, that's it. But I'm did done. you ever feel like because I can't do it. Because I'm bipolar, right. I don't let you. Right. And I think they're right. But, you know, did you ever feel like the devil was there? No, no. Oh, no. Because like I said, nothing was happening. And so, so at the, 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 the very, the, the day before the last day, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm not doing, I'm not even going to go into the session again. I'm, I'm not doing it again. And then I did a second uh, 5-MAO DMT thing. And... It was the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced in my life. Like it was, a, it was a melting into light. That's all I. No. Can, that's all I can describe it. And so it was kind of like, oh my god, we come from light, we go back to the light. Maybe that's why people talk about a, a, when they talk about a near death experience yeah. and they talk about the, the light. light. Yeah. Because it was literally, that's all I remember was just light. I was just in light, and it was like there was no sense of who I was or whatever apart from I was just it was just like this massive sigh where you just sink into something and I was and I came out of it and it's literally 15 minutes you know and I came out of it and people everyone else was sitting around me and they were clapping and touching my hair and and it was like this whole and all I had was gratitude like I was just like thank you for this experience what I cannot believe this experience of being shown what we are because it was about light and love and that sounds so cheesy no 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 but that's what it was it was like you are pure light and pure love at your essence and the difficulty is tr trying to na navigate this world yeah and and all the stuff that comes in on us on top to keep going back to like this is our this is our being this is our being, and so anyway, obviously, so I had that experience, and you come away from it, and then it's all about trying to implement it, you know. Or the one of the things that I got when I was there was like, oh, uh, sorry, I'm I'm all over. Oh, no, I love this because man. it's fascinating to me to talk about. And I again, so anyway, so I had the the last day I decided to go into the ayahuasca ceremony, and I was like, okay, I'm going to take a bit because I had had my experience and I was like you know what I'm gonna trust it a bit and then I went in and I took it and I started to feel like I was a tree 
like with my roots in the earth and the branches going up to the skies, like I was the tree. Yeah. And then it was almost like it zoned, that there was an image of it zoning in on, it started to rain and then it was almost like it zoned in on this raindrop. And as the raindrop hit the floor, it burst and contained in the raindrop was the whole, whole cosmos. And then I was just like, oh, okay, I'm done. This is, this is enough for me. Like, I, this is baby steps. And I was like, okay, that's it. I can, this is all I can handle right now. And then it, and I was like, I'm done. And then it just sort of drifted off. But what if you're done, but that's, ayahuasca is not done. But that's what I mean. Ayahuasca respected. I asked the ayahuasca to be like, this is all I can handle right now. Okay. I can't handle going off onto right. anything else. This is what I can handle. And it, let so me, I and, it let me, and it let me go. Because that's the amazing thing, is that people talk about these different medicines and, and, and different experiences because one of the ideas that I got when I was there was like, do breath, do breath work. Yeah. You don't need to be doing, I, you don't need to do any, you know, do breath yeah, work. Yeah. So when I left, that's what I've started focusing the on, is that breathing. I started doing, focusing on a lot of different breath work. So, so Sorry, let's... I'm not letting you get a word in. No, I, I love <laughs> that. But I actually, the one thing I do do is, is breathe. Uh, I do some right. breathing exercises and it's good. But if I am in ayahuasca and I'm in there and I'm like, I'm out. And I, is there an ayahuasca that says, no, you're not. You got to stay in. Well, I, I, they always say uh, that it will give you as much as you can handle. Oh, okay. That's what that's what the general consensus All right. is among people of that do it. All right. You know, is that it gives you what you can handle. So I think with, with me, because I was telling it that this is all I can handle and also... So it was very, it was very gentle and it wasn't giving me all these like crazy visuals of like, that's hey, I'm, I'm tripping saying. balls and stuff. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like that. It was very, that's cool. It was like, I'm going to give you a little taste of, yeah. of a visual because you're asking for it. Right. And now you have to go do the work of, of, I get it. And it's interesting since I've done it that one time, like many people will go back and I again know, and I again know, and again. I've done it the one time and it's almost like it's saying to me, don't come back until you are more open or you are more sort of done some of the healing that you need to do in other areas. And it's like I've lost all impetus to want to go back and do it, you know? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But, but, but it helped. Yeah, it helped. But then the other one that I tried, like, again, I know that they've started using psilocybin for depression. Like, you know that uh, mm. there's, been a, there's been research at John Hopkins and all oh, these major all right. universities now where they've started uh, investigating the use of psilocybin, mushrooms. Oh, for, yeah, 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 for right. For depression. Right. And some people microdose, which is what I do. I microdose now. How's mushrooms? Uh, well, the microdosing, you don't feel it. It's just uh. it's just a minute. But I did a mushroom journey, which is a bigger amount. And I did a mushroom journey. And the interesting thing, because like I said, with me and my depression, a lot of it has been centered around not feeling, like wanting to feel connected, but not feeling it. And yeah. just feeling sort of a bit of a alienation and a deadness and just, Numb. oh my God. Yeah, numbness. And... And I went into this uh, psilocybin journey and I took pictures with me and they said, if you want to bring some stuff with you. And I took a photo of me with my parents of when I was a kid, of when I was about two. And I just had this look of, on my face of, you know what kids are like when they're really curious? Yeah, yeah. And I was just like, I want to get back to that sense of curiosity That's right. that you have as a kid. Yeah. So I took this photo with me and... And I was, that was my intention of like, I want that curiosity again. But, but what I was shown, again, no visuals. And then it was like nothing was happening and I was getting frustrated. And I was like, oh, God, this was a waste. And why was I doing this? And then suddenly this song came on. And it was like, it just tweaked something and the gates just opened. Wow. And it was like, you wanted, to, you wanted to feel this is what, a parent's love feels like for a child. I'm gonna sh I'm gonna show you what it feels like, and I just wept. Like I just wept Damn. and wept and wept for uh, uh, 
I don't know. You know, I just put because up, it was so overwhelming. I just put up a, a post with this little actress on my show who gave me a gift, and I and I wrote. I know I say this all the time. If if we were just more like children, the right. world would be a better place for us. Right. And it's very true, you know, because I have grandchildren, and when you watch them, there's they're, they're just free, and they they're so like they laugh, they they do everything, they don't judge, they're just having, they're, it's just pure joy, right? Somewhat animal animals also, right? Yeah, Same no, thing. totally. Yeah, and that's why I guess that's why you and I are here talking about it. Yeah. Um. All right, that was fantastic. Because I was so into that. Now we got to get to we got to get to why you founded your your rescue. <laughs> that went off on a tangent, right? Yeah, because no, no, but it was amazing. I tell you why it was amazing. Because no, I'm not gonna tell you why yet. I'm gonna tell you when I end this, and then I'll you'll see why I think that was amazing. But how did you first begin the road dog? rescue well i just started i was originally fostering for another rescue and i used to go to the shelters and pick out the dogs and you know and then i i thought if i started doing my own thing it would be easier to put blinkers on in terms of like well these are the dogs that i would have as my own in the sense of like i like these particular breeds like i the bulldoggy kind of breeds are dogs that i would have Otherwise, it bec can become very overwhelming in terms of like, well, which one do you choose? Yeah. So it's like, OK, if I'm only going to try and gravitate towards the bulldog breeds and that cuts out a lot of the others where I can just sort of be a bit more, OK, these are the ones that I'm going to go for. And um, and the reason I called it road dogs is because I love old cars like I love classic uh -huh. cars. And originally I wanted to go around the US in in a you know, with my dog and interview people and do stuff. Yeah. My, my background's journalism. But, um, that's a good idea. And then idea. also, obviously, a dog is your ride or die. Like, a dog is your, is your best buddy for life. Like, a dog is probably some of the truest friends that we'll ever have, mm -hmm. you know, and members of the family. So that's how I kind of got into it. Um, and then as it grew, I started to, I, I rescued a little dog that was paralyzed couldn't use his back legs and he had such a such an amazing spirit like his wow. energy and his joy of life was indomitable and I was just like wow we have so much to learn from from these animals like they can they just go with the flow so much like they don't because they haven't got all this going on exactly they can just be and so um he basically got me into doing more of the special needs kinds of animals that have extra issues and uh, physical challenges or neuro challenges. Um, because also, I believe, like my motto now is never underestimate an underdog. Yeah. Because <laughs> I feel that they are a representation of our world as well. Yeah. Like you look at a dog and can think, oh, that dog is paralyzed or, oh, it's going to have a terrible life. And they show you the complete opposite, that they're having a raging life. Yeah, and you said something, that's what got me when I read it. You said something about, it doesn't matter if the dog has a year to live. Yes, yes. That was a beautiful thing yes. you said. That, Be because yes. a lot of people don't want these dogs because they only have a year to live. Yes. Well, oh, shit, now I'm getting all fucking No, it's it's hard. I mean, we're taught in this society, uh, you know, that everything is focused on life, 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 and how long and length and everything. But it ultimately, and I think that's one come from dealing with depression and dealing with that feeling of existence of just like, oh my god, how long is this going to go on for? Yeah, it's like, yeah. I yeah. don't want this life if it's just going to go on like this. And so it's really helped me switch in terms of like it's not about how long your life is it's about experiences and what what you bring to it and so to me again these animals can teach us so much more of of experiencing the day of what do you bring to your life what do you bring to other people right right that especially is something that i'm trying to focus on more and in, in that and i think which is missing from so much of us as we're, as we're in the rat race and we're about yes. get, as we're about getting paid and getting on yes is 
what about being of service? What are you doing to be of service to other, another life, another person? Just and because I really believe that that is what we are all here for. That it is all about us as a, a community, as a oneness. As somebody said something to me the other day, if someone extends your hand to you, you extend your hand to somebody else. And that got me teary because I thought that was so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. And ultimately, dogs and animals help us do that. And so for me, the death thing is, is again about reminding people that it's not about you. Like, you taking an animal... Ultimately, none of us have any control over life or what right, happens. Right, exactly. You know? So what about thinking about that animal and, and taking a hospice animal or taking an animal with special needs and going, I don't mind how long you live, but I'm going to make your life so awesome. Yeah. And we're going to do exactly. it together because your life yeah. improves as you are focused right. on bringing joy to that animal. You're going to the beach. You're doing like little fun things. Right, you know? right. So it's... So again, it's like, it's changing people to think of like, once you take the focus off yourself, your life actually gets better. Just as you're doing this to help people and put the word out there about depression. And so people, your life is getting better because you're Absolutely. doing it. Absolutely. And you know, what's funny that you say that because my therapist who I hadn't seen in 37 years and they surprised me in Graceland, a big thing. He said to me, and that, you know, I never really thought of it, but he said, this is your therapy as you help people. What, what exactly is, you, you should interview me, to be honest, but <laughs> <laughs> you, the, you should have your own show. I'm, t I'm not joking, and I don't say that a lot on these things, but I, I'll say it here. Um, but it's true, you know, because what we're doing is helping each other. Right. It was what you do with the dogs. Dogs are going to... You take a dog for a walk. The beautif beautiful thing about dogs is, but it's sad in a way too, that they can be abused by somebody and they still love the person. Right. That's amazing to me. It's not fair. Right. But that's the way dogs are. Right. Um, forgiveness. Forgiveness, right? Yeah, but it's like. Forgiveness. Yeah, um, I know. So there was a dog named Millie. This is what I want to get to, that was going to get yes. killed or something. What? Well, she was, uh, yeah, there was a dog that was surrendered to us, a little girl called Millie, who's an English bulldog who has a hyperplastic trachea, which is something that causes her to be more prone to pneumonia and her breathing. So she was surrendered to us as a hospice dog because we didn't know how long she was going to live. Um, but she's made it to, uh, she's over a year, a uh, year now. We thought uh, she was just going to live like a couple of months, but she's made it over a year and her, her foster is amazing. Like, and I, again, I think that they respond to love. I think they respond to love and right. care. Like this dog goes, to, he runs a gym. Uh, so she goes to the gym every day and she gets attention from all these wow. different people that are loving on her. So she's probably like, hey, I'm, if you know. And so when she does get sick, maybe she's got a little bit more to hold on to, to fight for. Because right. she's like, hey, I want to go and hang out with my gym friends. It's, I don't know. It's almost like the more love, the longer she'll, yeah, you know. Yeah. The more love. And that's why we should always give so much love. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's, totally. Oh, man. I'm, yeah, but I'm, it's hard. And I understand why. But what about you when they die? Don't it's you? It's hard. It's really hard. And, and uh, so to, again, coming back to mental health, I think that you have to protect yourself. You have to learn how to protect yourself because any loss is hard. It's not like, oh, they die. Like, I have puppies that come in sometimes that we take in pups from birth, even if they only last a couple of days. I feel it. Like yeah. I feel it because it's a life and it's that life leaving the world. Yeah. So... And I think it can compound itself. Like it can, you if you don't take care of yourself, the grief can really oh, yeah, 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 help. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, I'm actually working with a grief therapist to sort of. That's my idea of therapy is someone that understands grief yes. because she helps me work through all that. Because because I also find that really interesting. That yes, we can feel grief towards loss of our animals and towards loss of each other. But you can also feel grief about your life. You can also feel grief that you are not the person that you wanted to be yet. Do you know what I mean? Like they're very 
complicated feelings and emotions exactly we have to work through and i think dogs again it's like someone was saying the other day oh yeah dogs dogs work through trauma they just shake it off like you see them they just right. you see them physically shake it off and we don't do that we just go all right let me ask you a question because i have to ask everybody this lately you're absolutely right about that they can shake it off because they they have short memory or no memory. I don't know about dogs, but the way we the the reason I'm doing so well is because I have short memory. Right. If something hurts me, I just go to the next thought. Right. Because a lot of it is the thoughts. Do you care what people think? I do care too much what people think. Okay, that's yes. okay. Now I'm getting on yes. something here. Yes. Everybody I have asked that. Do you care what people, and I'm going to make a big deal about this. I'm going to start doing shows about it. M the majority of the people that care what people think have a mental illness. I, my wife doesn't. This other actor didn't. My right. son doesn't. They have nothing. Right. So I think there's a correlation between. There might be, yeah. You know, because. Or it might just be that we're more insecure. Yes. But I think it has to do with because our thoughts compound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, totally. And also, it's like remind got me back to thinking about the ego because I always feel like yes. the, the people that are the most insecure often have the strongest egos, which is why I was saying it was so hard to let go because the ego is so fearful of going. I'm not letting go. I'm not letting go. This is this is who I am. I'm not letting go. And I found, actually, as I've been working through and growing, trying to grow just in this last year, yeah. um, that I've had more anxiety. And I was talking to some people about it who had gone through the plant medicine experience with me, and they were kind of like, it makes more sense because there's more unknown because your ego is slowly, slowly opening up and letting go of some stuff. And so the stuff that's coming in is more is new and not known so yeah. therefore the other part of you is going oh well i don't i'm, I'm yeah. a bit scared now because i don't know oh i'm feeling this oh right. i feel a bit anxious exactly about, do you know what i mean yeah and and i've had to chop my ego was like years out of, years ago out of control okay being who i am and being whatever <laughs> So I've had to chop down that thing. Right. And I'm getting pretty good at it. But I also just, when by ego, I'm not necessarily meaning people that, with ego in the sense of like, that people think that they're all that. Oh, I get you. Yeah? I get yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, okay. Mine was a lot of all that, but there was, <laughs> <laughs> but there was also just a, a healthier ego, let's say. Right, right. Um, but I cared way too much for people. Right. So every time I would have a manic episode, where I was in the mental institution, woo! Right. The caring, what the outside of that mental hospital thought was a, a horrible movie. Oh, I bet. You get it? I bet, yeah. And I'm thinking, the way I've been in the last two years, working on that, not caring, like, man, it's so freeing. And exactly what you, we've been talking about for the last, I don't know, I don't know how long we've been talking. But, but don't you think, though, it's yes. really important for people to know about that in terms of for people to know that so much of our issues is also about how the mind works and how we think. Like, we're never taught, like, when you have depression. I mean, yes, they say go to therapy, but a lot of the time you go to therapy and it's not like they're telling you to be mindful of what is coming into your head. Of yeah. like, yes, you can't control the first thought right? You can't yes. control those thoughts that come in. But there are things that you can do yes. afterwards yes. to stop yourself from yes. spiraling. Yes. To stop. So to me, it's that's why the whole idea of like, for, you know, antidepressants and stuff, whatever you do is great. But you have to be doing the other stuff too. And it's really that's true. stupidly for me, it's only taken until I've been really beaten right down for me to go, oh, I, that's where I was talking about responsibility. Oh, I've actually got to really start being responsible for what I think. And that means... I've got to be guarding what I think. So if the thought comes in That's of like right. you're a piece of shit and you're going to go off yes. and spiral about how everyone yeah. else, no, I'm going to go switch to gratitude. Like even if it's or something whatever. as lame yeah. as whatever. And that those are the things that I feel like a lot of the time with depression, it's almost like we're taught 
that we're at the mercy of it. Yes, yeah, I get you, than, I get you. Do you know what I mean? But, but don't you think, here's what I'm thinking. This is getting, we're, this is like two people just, just getting bad, bad, it's great, but in a good way. Do, I'm thinking, this is what I've been telling people, the way to stop all this is prevent it from happening. It's kind of what you're saying, to do all the work, the meditating, the plant, right. the whatever, the this, the breathing, the... Yes. So it doesn't happen. Yes. That's my way of uh, fixing that problem of depression, yes. anxiety, or whatever. So now, as far as the uh, antidepressant, I say, we're not doctors, but we're just talking our lives. I say, like I was, if you're at the point of almost no return, you need that. Right, yeah. Because... If I didn't, if I didn't take the Lexapro, it right. might have been a, yeah. ba a bad time. So. Yeah, no, I'm certainly not advocating for people to, for, for people to not take meds. Yeah. It's, to me, it's the same with the dogs. It's like I just feel as a society, we are very quick fix it. Yeah. And yeah. meds are definitely a part of that, and they can be hugely helpful. But the ongoing fix is for people to fix themselves. Like your quote says, be the change that you wish to see in the world. The change is all internal. Yeah, like it's yeah. all I us agree. working on our internal stuff. I Otherwise the world is never, you know, so, yes. and that is the hardest part because the hardest part of that is coming to the point of like, I accept that this is who I am that these are my issues or, you know, whatever. Instead of, like I said, when I was used to rail against, I don't want to be depressed. Why have yeah, I got yeah. very, very victimy? And I still can be like that. But that's not going to change the fact that it's there. So it's either like, are you going to step up and really start trying to figure out what you need to do every day, if necessary, if this is what you need to do every day that's right. to get that's your head right. to this point, that's right. then you have to do it. That's right. It's kicking and screaming, that's but right. this is what you have to do. It. Yes. Nobody said that the world is fair, no. you know, but you want a good attitude, then do this. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and so now that's where I've been brought to. And, and coming back to the dogs with the whole idea of them shaking things off, I feel, again, that we're a mind-body connection and everybody just focuses on the mind. Like, yeah. this is happening in your mind. But it's stored in the body, too. Yeah, yeah. Very, you know? very true. And we don't take advantage of that or we don't look at that. And so I feel that like with things like breath work, you or whatever else you can do to do, you can start doing things where you're acknowledging your body yeah. and releasing stuff. Yeah. And that we, I think on a day-to-day -day basis of like with the thoughts that it's really about, because I was reading something to do with yoga and they were talking about the emotional, I can't remember the name of it, but they talk about emotional blockages that we all have and that they get compounded because you, we don't deal with them. We, they build up and they build up and mm -hmm. they build up. And what we all need to do as an individual and as a society is like, Release, 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 yeah. release, release as you go, release as you go, yeah. release as you go. Yeah. Then you don't wind up being 56 years old like I was and going, Fuck. Yes, yeah. You know, and I think that there's so many people out there that are quietly going about their lives or living their lives or people that where other people are kind of like, what happened to them? I thought everything was fine because they're hanging on. They're just hanging on. That's right. You know? That's right. I but they need some tools, you know, and animals are part of that, but. Let me tell you something. We're going to get to conclude, but this is a, an incredible rescue <laughs> and we, we need to raise some money. Oh yeah. Okay. So we're going to probably put up the, um, whatever it is that you need to put up, we'll put it up on the thing. And you guys, could, and, and I'm telling you, well, I'm going to bring up, I, I got Vito, my <laughs> bulldog from her, and I'm going to bring Vito out. But before I do that, um, I want to say, this conversation, and then maybe it's because it's my show, and I want to pat, not pat myself on the back, 
But this was an inf an incredible conversation. It 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 truly was a, about mental health and the way she speaks mm -hmm. and her knowledge of it. And I hate to get off the dog thing, but that's all part of it. So please, uh, let's raise some money for um, Road Dog Rescue uh, as much as we can. And also for her, because she just gave such a, I'm learning here. <laughs> I'm freaking learning. And she should have her own damn show. No, no, no. Hey, can I just but, can I just butt in for one yeah. thing? Yeah. Because one of the things that was really important to me, or, or I think is a really important message, is I have always felt like no self worth, or that you can't give out anything until you've come through the other side of it. I feel the same way. But I've learned yes. through the dogs and like through doing Mark's right. page is that you can be in the darkness, but you can still put out the light. Ooh, and that, to me, is the most nice. important thing of, of what I think people also need to know, is that they can be in their own depression and that they can be in their own darkness and feel like they have nothing to offer, but they do because yeah. you can still do something. You can still put a smile out or you can still... Yeah, yeah. like. With Mork's page, I do more. Oh, Mork! Let's talk about a little bit about Mork. Mork's uh, hugely famous. Well, yeah, he got he got well known, but he he rescued. <laughs> he came from the meat trade in China, right? So he was rescued, literally rescued from a meat truck in China, and then Road Dogs basically works with this amazing rescue out there called Harbin SHS and work to bring a bunch of dogs here. And so they sent me his photo when they rescued him. And he was like held against the night sky. And I was just like, oh my God, I want him. And his name's Mork. And so he came here and then he got well known because people thought he looked like Baby Yoda. And yeah. he, he kind of became viral. And then I thought, you know what? Because of his story is one of hope because his story shows that you can be in a point of like, there's no way out. Where's the way out? I'm stuck. I can't see a way forward. I'm on this. Yes. And, and light comes in from left field. And that's why, to me, I'm always like, there's always a possibility. Like, when I get yeah. my really dark days, which I still do, yeah. I'm like, what is the one thing of, what? what is the one thing that you believe? And it's like, I believe in possibilities. I believe in the possibility of change, that there is a possibility right now it might feel like 0.01 percent of a possibility but it's there and so to me with Mork that's his story he was on a meat truck and he's now living in Southern California Damn. how does that happen yeah there and so go. I use his page and his story to promote that and show and promote mental wellness and health because I think that people can see it and and they have done like I people will write to me and say, oh, he helps me with my anxiety, like watching his videos and he helps That's me with right. this. That's right. And and there was a woman who came to a meetup that we did. She her name is Lisa and she had a brain condition where she had to have bone marrow transplant and she watched walk videos wow. as she was doing her spinal tap. Wow. And so to me, it's like it comes back to it all comes circle back to that that underdog thing of yeah. never underestimate because you never know the impact of some little, some little, you know, disabled dog or some kid that gets written off. Yeah. You never know what no. impact they're going to have on the world and what they can bring. And usually you know? it's a bigger impact. Yes. And it, yeah. I always say the bigger, the more you go through, if you take yeah. the right road when you get out, right, it's going to be so rewarding. But that's also why it's so important of what you're doing, of giving a platform for people to talk about it, yeah. talk about their stuff, because there's still so much shame around mental health and mental illness. I don't even like saying the word mental illness. It makes me just kind of go... I know. They t they, you know, they, you know? They, they, I'm not... They say, don't say mental illness. I've been told that. But I've been saying it my whole life that right. it's hard to, to right. say mental health. I mean, I right. like mental health too, but um, I, I say mentally ill and people... Yeah, no, yeah, but you know what I mean. Bring out Vita. Um, We're bringing out my dog right now. Yeah. He's going to be cute. 
So this is Vito. I got him from uh, Nikki Road Dogs Rescue, and uh, he's been just amazing. I mean, he's smart. Uh, give me a kiss, bucket. <laughs> he's really smart, and he's a good boy. He's a little tired right now, but look at the camera, buddy. There he goes. And I got him on all social media, so people know who he is now. And he's just a, he's a, and I appreciate it, and I thank you for that. What about your sanctuary? Yeah, no, my goal, ultimately my goal is to have a sanctuary, and um, I want to have it so there's a place for the dogs to stay, because a lot of the dogs that we take are medical and special needs, and they're, they are harder to adopt out, yeah. you know. People don't necessarily want them, so to me it's like for they could have a place. But it's really also for people to come as well, like for people yeah. to be able to come to a place in nature and hang out with the dogs or not hang out with the dogs. Like I, even if they just want to sit under a tree and read a book, I would just love a place yeah, for cool, yeah. there to be community because we talk about community outreach, but I like the idea of community in reach so that we have this place and then the community can come to us and then yeah. we can work with different groups and people that are in need or you know, that they can come to and, um, well, yeah. we could probably, well, let's work on that. Yeah. Yeah. Let's work on that. Um, is that better? We'll work on that. Cause Paul's been wanting to do that her whole life. Yeah. We got a sanctuary at my house already. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's it. We've had a, an incredible discussion on a lot of things. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you. And the audience is going to love you. It's going to love your, what you're doing. I, I can just tell you that. And um, I can't wait to put this out. I really can't. I already see how I'm going to do it. Right, Vito? Hey, Vito. All right. State of mind. Thank you. There you go. Wow, Look thank at you. That.